Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it is your host with the vanilla most, Avril R32 here, and destroy the ever living boo boo saying off that like and subscribe button as we climb even higher the 1500 ladder. I'm sorry if I sound tired. I've been playing Black Ops 6 all day, and uh, the server crashed on me when I was about to finish the zombies Easter egg. So I'm, I'm kind of upset. So show me some love by hitting that like and subscribe button. I'll be okay, I hope. <laughs> so I wanted to show off this really cool 60 card hero list. And of all things is playing elemental hero, thunder freaking giant. So must be fusion summoned once per turn, you can ditch a card, target one monster on the field with original attack, less than the attack of this card, destroy that target, requires spark man and clay man. Now you're probably wondering, Avery, why in God's name are we playing more bricks than just besides the Neos? Well, that's because that this guy was playing uh, primites. And uh, for those of you who are going to say, oh, Avery, this must have been like a top 16 and a 16-man local. No, actually, this topped a regional, ladies and gentlemen, out in uh, Halifax. So, yeah, take that for what you will. So let's go over these Primite cards real quick. So this is a Drill Beam. You reveal one Primite card or a normal monster in your hand except Drill Beam. Or if you control a normal monster or a level 5 or higher Primite monster except a token, you can activate this effect without revealing a card. Then target one face-up card on the field, negate its effects, and if you do, banish it. During your main phase, if you control a Primite monster, you can set this card from your graveyard. You can only use each effect once per turn. You play these Primite cards, as you're about to see once I read the other ones. You play these because it can help facilitate out your vanillas so that they're not really as much bricks. So this one here is a Primite Roar. So you pay 2,000, then you declare a normal monster card name. The declared normal monsters and Primite monsters you control cannot be destroyed by battle until the end of your opponent's turn. Then if you control no monsters, you can special summon one one declared normal monster from your deck in defense mode. If your opponent normal summons a monster, you can banish this card from your graveyard and then target a normal monster you control or in your grave. Banish one monster from the field with less attack than that monster. Hey, uh, Neos is 2,500. That's pretty big. 16 is kind of whatever, and then 800, you're not going to be banishing nothing. But again, another good card to help facilitate these vanillas. Getting out a Neos for free uh, on turn one is really good. This is basically a co another copy of Hero Lives, if you think about it. Next up here, we have Primite Lordly Load. So when this card's activated, you add a Primite card from deck to hand except itself, and you can declare a normal monster card name. Special summon one declared normal monster from your hand deck or graveyard in defense mode. Also, you cannot activate the effects of special summoned monsters on the field this turn. You can only use each effect of Lordly Load once per turn. Normal monsters and Primite monsters you control gain 300 attack for each normal monster with different names in your grave. So at most, your monster is going to be gaining 900, I guess. Um, this card is interesting because it searches you either the Roar or the Drill Beam. And then it can also bring out one of your vanillas from hand, deck, or grave. Um, yeah, you can't activate special summon monsters effects. So I'm I'm not any kind of hero expert. I'm not going to lie. So I don't know if like there's a way that you can play around this with certain lines. Um, for a time, actually a couple years ago, around like when COVID first hit, uh, I actually really wanted to play heroes. But ever since then, I mean, that was, like I said, a few years ago, I haven't kept up with what the deck is doing now. And I know that they're getting new support in Supreme Darkness. It makes me want to play it. But I don't know yet. But let's just go through this because this this list is just crazy. So we're playing one Neos, one Sparkman, one Clayman, uh, one Plasma. A lot of this other stuff is going to be pretty standard. Uh, obviously, Sparkman and Clayman are the standout cards. Uh, three Mally, one Wing Kree, but level six. Uh, three Ferris, three Stratos, one Liquid Soldier, or as I like to say, Liquid Ass. It used to be sixty dollar card. Uh, one Blaze Man, double Shadow Mist, double Vion, and then I think it's really funny <laughs> that in this fucking sixty card. Pop we're playing four hand traps <laughs> one imperm and three follows like instantly the deck shoots up to what is it now 120 dollars a copy so what 120 times three 300 plus 60 you're looking at like let's say 300 to 360 to 370 for a set of follows right now so like instantly this deck becomes like six six to seven hundred dollars it's insane uh one denier uh and then double increase only 26 monsters uh any of y'all hero mains let me know like is, is this pretty standard like i don't know how normal that is but especially in a 60 card pile that seems kind of rough um granted you are playing the three emergency call with the three hero lives and you've got fusion destiny miracle fusion so i guess those kind of double up same thing with the primate cards they double up as monsters as well uh three og poly um so i guess make the thunder giant like <laughs> three talents one rota two thrust one miracle fusion three fusion destiny one dark ruler 
one Foolish Burial, three Droplet, and then three Spell Card Monster Born. I knew that the moment this card got revealed, it was good. So target a monster in either graveyard, special summon it to your field, but for the rest of this turn, it cannot attack and neither player can activate its effects. You can only activate one Spell Card Monster Born per turn. This thing's a quick play. And on top of that, it's also just a free extender body from either graveyard. So like if your opponent ashes and I don't know, you need a tuner, then you just revive it. Like it's it's a really interesting card with interesting applications. Same thing with the spell card soul exchange. Like that card's really solid, to be honest. Uh, we're playing one drill beam, one roar. Uh, the three Lordly Load, uh, one Imperm, and then one Favorite Contact. Again, pretty standard stuff. Um, for the side deck, we're playing three Perelia. Again, making this deck even more expensive. Three Ash, one Feather Duster, another Thrust, double Dark Ruler, just I guess if we go second. One Mass Change, I guess for when you know you're going to go first, it's easier to make Dark Law. Uh, one Call By with 3D Barrier, that's pretty standard whenever you're playing a Thrust package. Uh, for the extra deck, we're playing uh, two Cross Crusader, one Infernal Divisor, one Wonder Driver, one Dread Decimator, Abyss Dweller, and Baguska, and then, of course, the fantastic Thunder Giant, one Dark Law, one Sunrise, one Infernal Rage, one Phoenix Enforcer, one Shining Neos Wingman, and two Wake Up Your Elemental Hero, yeah! <laughs> Uh, side note, we really need Air Neos to be a QCR in the quarter century bonanza. Either that or uh, Beaver Warrior, just to troll. So what do I think about this? So obviously this is crazy, right? I'm really hoping now that this list is out there in the wild, um, that once we get Supreme Darkness, I'm really curious to see if any of these classic hero cards, whether it's Elemental Hero, Evil Hero, whatever, make some kind of resurgence. Um, again, I'm no hero expert. If I had to guess just looking at the deck, I'm sure his end board doesn't consist of a fucking Thunder Giant. Like, this card at face value is garbage. <laughs> like, it's a 2400 attack beat stick, and if it gets Book of Moon, you're crapping your pants. It, it, its defense has 100 less defense than the attack of Spartman, 16 compared to 1500 defense, which just makes no sense. Um, on top of that, I think that he's maybe playing this more as like a going second card. Because if you think about it, right, like if you go poly, Sparkman and Clayman and a Thunder Giant, you pitch whatever. Like let's say you pitch a dead Mally in your hand. You pop a monster. And again, keep in mind, it says you target a monster on the field with original attack. So if a monster's original attack's a thousand and it's boosted up to three you can pop that 3,000 attack monster because its original attack is 1,000. On top of that, too, it's also level 6, which means um, you can do, like, some rank 6 shenanigans with Mali. Obviously, that they're not doing that, but it's also a body that you can establish getting these into the grave, and then with heroes in grave, I guess you can do some other stuff, like maybe with Denier, but you have to have a Destiny hero monster uh, on your field or in your grave to summon it. Um, this only lets you send back a Destiny hero monster, it looks like, yeah, so... Uh, I'm sure that there's some combo lines here where Thunder Giant just acts as an extender um, be because, again, at, at best, you're using this as a going second card, and if you go first, maybe you're using it as an extender. And especially with a 60-card list, it's smart that this player decided to do 60 cards because, one, you don't want to open up the Brick of Neos, which is already being played in every single hero deck under the sun, which is really cool, I have to admit. Um, but then you're also playing two extra bricks in the form of Clayman and Spartman. Maybe technically you're playing four total because I guess you really wouldn't want to open up Plasma because you'd rather search it. Um, what does Wing Karibo do? This card's always treated as Element Hero favorite card. Can I be normal summoner set? Must be special summon from your hand or grave by banishing an Element Hero fusion monster or a Wing Karibo from your hand face up field or grave. Okay, so you could like banish the Thunder Giant. You can only special summon level six once per turn this way. When an opponent's monster declares an attack or your opponent activates a monster effect on the field, quick effect you can attribute to this card. Destroy that one monster. And if you do inflict damage, your opponent equal to its original tag. Uh, you, you're probably never doing that, but it's a searchable card because it's an elemental hero and favorite card. So like if you have Thunder Giant up, then you can cheese this out. And it's also level six, which is actually kind of funny. Um, but overall, I think that this is really cool and it really makes me excited for Supreme Darkness to see how this deck is going to evolve more. Maybe I'll play Heroes. I, I've been debating on what I want to play because I really don't want to play Rizal. I'm kind of meta out right now or meta out right now, I guess would be the better way of saying it. But I mean, the deck just instantly becomes expensive as hell because you're playing three Fualos. But this deck is really cool. I've always been a hero fan. It's just so combo heavy. My, my ass would misplay just by normal summoning a Stratos, I'm sure. But let me know what you guys think about this in the comments below. Really interesting build, and I'm really excited to see where this goes post Supreme Darkness. Maybe we'll see Evil Hero Thunder Giant or something. Who knows? Or no, Lightning Golem. What am I saying? Guys, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.